Hey, welcome back to the only video on YouTube where by watching this, you get a 15 minute pass to be as loud as you want in the library. Librarian can't say shit. Folks, I watched a lot of Dr. Phil growing up. Every day I came home from school, I was greeted by his glowing pearl-like cranium and his bristly undernose garden. His is that too much? He He's bald and has a mustache. I think I spent more time with Dr. Phil than my own dad. Is Dr. Phil my TV dad? Oh God, have I reached the point in my Oedipus journey where I'm gonna kill my TV daddy? Am I gonna bang Oprah? If you're not familiar with Dr. Phil, when he's not fronting alternative rock group Good Charlotte or spending time in his insane mansion. Seriously, have you seen this thing? Each room has this bizarre aesthetic like wooden tentacle monster, Elsa's pool room, gun, and the fuck door. Also, he's got these weird plastic figures all over the place. 50 bucks says he's got a room filled to the brim with unopened Funko Pops. But when he's not doing that, he hosts a daytime TV talk show centered on helping those suffering from mental illness and various other problems. Seems like a wholesome and positive TV show, right? Now, I'm not sure if the show has changed or I've just gained some perspective from growing up, but I don't think this show is actually a good thing. I don't know, I just get a strange vibe. Also, I'm not defending all the people he brings on the show. A lot of them are just absurd individuals who aren't actually seeking help, but more a shot at 15 minutes of fame. Let's just get into this video and see what we can gather. Bad and Bougie is a lifestyle. It consists of Starbucks coffee every morning, tanning, get my eyelashes done, eyebrows, make sure I'm put together, I'm on point. This is what it takes to be bad and bougie. Okay, I'm on board. I don't know if that's how I define the bad and bougie lifestyle. I'd defer to Migos for that. But so far, this guy just seems like an eccentric individual. I'm addicted to stealing to live the bad and bougie lifestyle. My mom, she's clothed me since I was a baby, so I kind of still expect that at 26. If I could spend my mom's money before my money, then I will. Okay, so he does a little crime. A little stealing from his parents. Big deal. Starbucks is expensive. In the past three years, I've probably stolen about twenty to $25,000 from my mom. I've stolen between three to 5000 from my sister. This one time, I stole from my friend. She was at work at the time, and she would leave her cash at home. She would literally have like three or four grand on her. I just grabbed the cash out of the purse. If I can take somebody else's money to build myself up, then I'm going to. Wow, uh, you're just fully admitting to that on national television. Like, I don't think there's any sort of protection for admitting these things on a TV show. Also, why would you brag about any of this? It's not hard at all. Like, oh yeah, I stole from my mom. What? What I like to post is twerking videos. For a guy, I know I am a good twerker. I got a little bit of an ass, so it's like... Why the humility all of a sudden when talking about your butt? If twerking's supposed to be your thing, why do you lead with all the petty crime and then describe your butt as a little bit of an ass? I'm trying to help your career out here. If you can't get excited about your work, what do you expect us to feel about it? Let's go! My first twerk video, I decided to buy uh, Facebook views for it and that got 33,000 views. I like twerking, that's how I want to get recognized, that's what I want to be known for is my butt. I love the, the generic dubstep they used there. Let's go! Also, this clip where he brags about buying views. I'm sorry, that's like opening up a smoothie bar and then buying your first smoothie for $1,000. Hey, you made $1,000, but you also were your only customer. This video only came out a little over a month ago, but it has this extremely 2016 energy to it. You know, twerking, talking about the song Bad and Bougie. Was he in a coma for the last three years? Oh God, is that what this episode's about? Dr. Phil breaking it to him that it's 2020. Maybe I misjudged him. I do want to get Brazilian butt lift. It's important for me to flex on Instagram or like be bad and bougie because that's the lifestyle I want. If I'm good, then everything else. Just as a warning, this is one of the most uncomfortable walkouts onto the Dr. Phil stage I've ever seen. Well, um, I guess Alex is gonna join us now, so come on out. What's poppin'? How you doing? Good, how are you? Well. What's poppin', Dr. Phil? Uh, I feel like he was like, I'm gonna be the next cash me outside girl. My catchphrase is gonna be, what's poppin' Dr. Phil? I like that he repeated it because it definitely didn't land the first time. And then, you know, this happens. I'm okay. Just okay? You know it'll change that? Tell me. Tell you? <laughs> 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 
Might make it a little better. Didn't help. I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got, what do you call it? Um, a real job. A real job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dr. Phil's got jokes. But what did that even mean? This guy does a little twerk routine and then Dr. Phil responds with, I've got a real job? That doesn't even make sense. At what point did he establish that his career was twerking? Also, let's be real here, Dr. Phil. You do not work a real job. How many people are waking up and telling their wives, oh, I've got to go host my daytime TV talk show where people twerk on stage. I don't think many people living in the real world do what you do, Dr. Phil. That's okay, I got a real job too. And what would that be? Um, I'm a line cook. Line it's cook. not that bad and bougie, but I mean, you know, I steal from my family, so. Tell me about that. You, you wrote in, mm -hmm. uh-huh. And why did you write in? What's your goal here? Okay, I've gone in on enough on Alex for this video. We're, we're talking about Dr. Phil, not Alex. If Alex wrote in to be on the Dr. Phil show, why even give him the time of day? I don't think that helps anybody other than maybe get his Instagram account a couple more follows. Now, I'm not a doctor here. He is. But I don't think granting a person who has an unhealthy desire for attention, a platform like this, a beneficial form of treatment, down below the video in the description, it, it describes the show as the most comprehensive form on mental health issues in the history of television. I definitely think this episode's a prime example of that. She has money she can rely on. She's not going to end up homeless. Well, no, actually, wow. that's the trajectory she's on. She's going to be without a place to live. That's her problem, not my problem. Clearly. You, can, you control the faucet here. And He's, the faucet is about to get turned totally off, so there is nothing coming out. No, it's not, no, it's not, so it's okay. This video ends in such a weird spot. I thought we were gonna get some real Jerry Springer style chair throwing. Ah, the good old days. Remember when TV knew it was trash and didn't try to disguise itself as having some sort of altruistic value? <laughs> Memories. Okay, we had some yucks and some chuckles with that video, but I think it only showcased one aspect of the Dr. Phil show. It's kind of a silly, dumb rebranding of a Jerry Springer era talk show masquerading as a platform for mental health. There's another really dark side where it seems like he's just fully exploiting those suffering from mental illness. I have a relationship with Vladimir Putin. One of the ways that Vladimir communicates with me is through his ties. The one picture here with a black tie with the white polka dots, he'll post these photos of the black with the white polka dots, just letting me know that he is gonna come and take me back home to Russia. So now he will wear the beet color tie. He's just letting me know, look, I'm not kissing anybody, it's the beet tie. Like, this really isn't okay. Exposing and exploiting someone who's going through something like this on such a national scale is, feels incredibly gross. Well, how are you? Oh, <laughs> a lot of different emotions going on right now. Yeah, you said that you're processing a lot of this and it's just an audience of one. And that's what I wanted today was an audience of one. Ah uh, yes, an audience of one. You know how most psychiatric treatment takes place? An audience of one and then an average national viewership of 3.8 million viewers. This also isn't the first time someone clearly suffering has been used this way for the show. There's a big giant promotional push for his interview with actress Shelley Duvall. I loved Robin Williams. I don't think he's dead. Where do you think he is? Shape-shifting. Do you see him? Has, yes. A star's descent into mental illness. The man who's threatening me is the sheriff of Nottingham. I think there's a worrying disc inside me. That's a big yikes for me, Dr. Phil. Yucky. Basically, my point is, is this the kind of content we should be supporting? Like, if you watch Dr. Phil, that's totally fine. I, I still do occasionally as well. But I think it's important to keep in mind what it actually is. I also think educating and understanding mental health is incredibly important, but I definitely don't think this is the best way to provide that information. You know, it's really got me reflecting and looking at myself. Am I any better than Dr. Phil? Ah! I do declare I've become Mr. Doctorate Phil himself. I even have my loving wife Robin out in the audience. I might have gone a little too foghorn leghorn on that accent there. That was the worst bald cap ever. Do I have YouTube beef with Dr. Phil now? Do I have to challenge him to a boxing match? Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I do recommend checking out some of these other videos that fellow YouTubers have made. I had a good laugh watching them. Also, 
Thank you so much for the 150 subscribers. That means so much to me and I truly appreciate everyone who watches my videos. If you enjoyed this one, consider giving it a like and let me know down in the comments your thoughts. You know, should I keep the Dr. Phil look? Do we like it? Do we hate it? Who knows? If you're new here, welcome. I post a weekly video every Wednesday focusing on odd and unusual topics from educational films on why magic and having two moms is the work of the devil or imagining what it'd be like if Santa was incredibly muscular. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing. I'd super appreciate it. Until next time, hope you have a great night, great day and great everything. And I'll catch you later. I do declare I've become Mr. Doctorate Phil himself.